everybody. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for coming. Let me say, let me start with this. Uh, attendance tonight was 5,549. The gate was $569,000. And uh, fight of the night, no question about that. Tate versus Zingano. The KO of the night was uh, Brown. And the submission of the night is uh, Pineda. $50,000 each for all of them. <clears throat> so before we get started, I'd like to call up uh, Eric Shanks from Fox. He's the president of Fox Sports to say a few words. Well, Dana mentioned it uh, earlier tonight that uh, the Ultimate Fighter Season 18 is going to uh, premiere on Fox Sports 1, the new national sports network from Fox. Uh, two years ago, it was Dana and Lorenzo that really were the first guys to actually believe in the idea of Fox Sports 1. And when we did our deal, they believed in us that we would actually keep our word that at some point, um, all of the UFC programming would have one home at Fox. And these guys have killed it for us over the past year and a half. And then starting August 17th on Fox Sports 1, pretty much all of the UFC content that lives on the various Fox outlets will have a home on Fox Sports 1. It's going to anchor uh, Wednesday nights on Fox. All of UFC will be in prime time uh, anchoring Wednesdays uh, on Fox Sports 1, 52 weeks a year. So just want to say thanks to the UFC and to Dane and Lorenzo for believing us, and congratulations to everybody tonight that put on a great night of fights. Thanks. Any of you guys have any questions for Eric before he uh, walks out? Figured. All right. Thanks, buddy. They don't ask a lot of questions around here. Any questions for anybody else? We can start with uh, Kelvin, please. Kelvin, obviously, uh, you know, emotional win for you tonight. Have you had a chance to let it soak in a little bit? Tell us, tell us how you're feeling right now. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm I'm excited and blessed to be in the position that I am now, man. Um, I don't know. It's just very emotional, you know. Understandable. Very, very close fight. Obviously, uh, you know, when the bell sounded, judge's decision was about to be read. How confident did you feel that that you had won the fight? I didn't know. Um, in my, my head, I was just like, you know, be prepared for anything. So, and, so. and if I could ask uh, Uriah briefly, obviously, I know a, a tough loss for you tonight. Um, I know you said all along that, that, you know, you weren't buying into the hype and you, you had to get this win and all that. But, uh, I mean, hands down, shuffling the feet a little bit. Uh, I mean, can you explain where, where you were you showboating? I mean, did, did you kind of buy into the hype at all or what happened in there? No, I was, uh, I was trying to have some fun, man. I mean, a big part of it is kind of hard, too. Because, you know, I trained with the guy, and I like him, and it was kind of like that emotional side I was trying to get rid of. So it was kind of weird, and, you know, just going in the ring, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, here we go again. And then it, that side just kind of got the best of me, but there's no excuse, you know. Kelvin's a great guy. He's a tough kid. You know, I think he's going to go really far in the sport, and I'm happy for him. Thanks. And just one final question, if I could, for Cat, please. Uh, obviously, kind of a, a cool scene as you came in tonight. Uh, looked like just maybe some tears were flowing. You walked around and touched, uh, you know, every part of the cage in the octagon. Uh, what, what was going through your head as, as the fight was getting underway? Stop crying. Oh, <laughs> I was like, no. Um, it was it was just really surreal. I was uh, I was overwhelmed definitely by the opportunity. You know, I knew I would be excited. I knew that it was going to be amazing. But I don't I don't think I had any idea how much it would impact me from the inside out you know and uh it just felt great it felt really really special to me tonight this this moment will be hard to top all right there yep <clears throat> Hey, Misha, obviously you were uh, going pretty hard at her two rounds, over two rounds. Um, did, you th did you think that she'd, uh, over here, sorry, did you, did, you, did you think that she'd be able to take those strikes, and did you just kind of run out of gas there at the end? Oh, I believe Sorry. I mean, I knew t Cat was going to be an incredibly tough fight, um, so, you know, it didn't surprise me that she didn't go down with that. It didn't surprise me that she didn't tap. I mean, I was expecting an all-out war all three rounds, and that's what we got. I guess then for help follow up for for, for Kat. 
um, you know, the now that you're the coach, you know, has that sunk in yet? That you're going to be in a few weeks, you'll be starting taping and on everything else. Um, first thing I did after the fight was go and call my son. And he asked me how I did, and I told him that I won. And he's like, so we get to go to Vegas? And they have a lot of swimming pools there, right? I was like, yeah, we get to go to Vegas. And he's like, and that means you finally get to fight Ronda Rousey, right? And I was like, yeah, we get to fight Ronda Rousey. You know, so it's, it's just... It's surreal. It's a really, it's a really good feeling, and, and this is exactly what I wanted, and and it's happening exactly the way I expected. And well, I guess not the way I expected, but you know, things are happening the way they should, and it's, it just feels great. Questions for Misha. Misha, did you feel the stoppage was somewhat early? I do, but you know, I just know how I felt inside the cage. I haven't had a chance to actually go back and watch it, but um, you know. Kate came in and told me before we ever left the locker room that if I warn you to move, all I need to know is that you want to stay in the fight. And uh, I felt that I, I did that. I got from the bottom up. I got cut knee a few times on the way, tried to shoot another shot, and the fight was stopped. Um, I, you know, I didn't feel like I was out of the fight, but, you know, what can I say? Um, for both Duraya and, and Scott, you've trained together before, but training is training, fight is fight. Uh, to both of you, what was different in there tonight versus training? Um, I guess just the the cruel intention, you know. Like in practice, you're always looking out for each other's best interests, and I could feel he was trying to knock me out, which he told me afterwards, and I was trying to do the same. So, uh, I mean, I got rocked a couple times, solid punches in there, and um, it's just a different intensity level. Live live fight versus practice is so much different. So uh, it's just tough. Yeah. Um it's just the intensity level. You know, uh, I think midway through that first, you're right, hit me with a knee to the chest. And I was like, oh, he's, gonna, he's trying to take my head off. So, uh, <laughs> But, you know, it was fun. Nonetheless, you know, I, I, I want a rematch whenever he's ready. <laughs> we, we already said it in the cage, you know, hopefully it's for a belt. But, um, you know, I had a blast out there. I was trying to take his head off. He was trying to take mine off. He got, you know, I made a small mistake. I grabbed the wrong hand, and he finished his choke. So, you know, hats off to him. He's my buddy. And uh, we're headed to mix here in like what an hour <laughs> yeah some 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 beverages <laughs> quick follow up for cat if i could please cat uh, surprisingly afterwards you admitted that you were scared actually of misha um can you kind of give some insight on that and do you have that same kind of fear of, of ronda is it a healthy fear i mean what is that about absolutely healthy fear i think to say you're not frightened you know going into a fight is, is uh, there's a border between being cocky and being confident you know and and I like to say a little bit, I like to be confident, you know, absolutely not cocky. And, and I like to have that healthy fear of my opponents. You know, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps my camps, uh, you know, relatively stressful for me. But it makes me continue to always be really hard on myself and always strive for the best. You know, um, I always start strong and finish stronger. I, I hate when I leave the gym knowing I could have done something more. And um, it's... It's it's just something for me that uh, you know it it drives me to put myself in situations that I'm not comfortable in, and it always ends up being something that I, I have the opportunity to, to figure out and and get through, and then and then I have another goal and a personal accomplishment to make, you know. So so it's all positive. It's all positive fear, but it's definitely it's something that that feeds me and fuels me for sure. If I could, please, for Travis. Um, if there was one move I didn't think you'd open with, it was a high kick. Um, was that part of the game plan? Did you did you feel it? I thought you'd be kind of afraid of that after last time. Yeah, I kind of wanted to go out there and show everybody my hamstring just fine. And um, you know, I was, he was quick on that shot, and he got in as I was throwing my as I was throwing my kick. And yeah, I just. Uh, you know, it was, it was part of my game plan. I saw when Rothwell went southpaw with him, he was really confused, and um, a lot of stuff opened up on Gabriel Gonzaga when when he when a righty went southpaw, and um, I think that's one of the reasons why he shot so early and just committed everything to it is because you know you confuse people when you start switching stances and you have different attacks from different angles. And can you talk us through the finish? Obviously, spectacular finish there against the cage. Some people were saying, were some of those elbows maybe illegal? Did it, you know, hit the back of the head? Was there any concern that maybe you were connecting to the back of the head, or do you feel it was a clean finish? No, I remember hitting him with one, 
and the referee was right there. I could kind of see him staying off, and, and, I, and he didn't say anything. So I hit him with two more, and by that time he was done, and I just kind of like stopped. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel him fighting it anymore. So I just, uh, you know, I'm, I try to be respectful in the cage, and, and um, you know, if I know that somebody can't defend themselves, I'm not going to take advantage of that. And last one for you, Travis. What, what do you want next, man? I know how disappointed you were after the last loss. This is a big win. I mean, are you are you a contender now? Are you looking for top level guys? Are you still a prospect? I mean, where do you feel like you're at in your career right now? You know, I think um, I think I'm starting to get some of the recognition um, that I may not have gotten before, and and I think it's due. I think I've put in some of my time. I think that, what's this like my sixth or seventh fight in the UFC, and um, you know, I'm coming off of one loss in my career. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's time for me to start moving up and get those shots, like you know Silva and, and some of the some of the guys in the top ten. And you know, if that doesn't put me in the top ten, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll be there shortly. Question for Misha, over to your left. Um, I haven't seen this for myself, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. But did you tweet? Uh, is there a photo floating around of your hand actually touching the mat as you as you were need? Did I get that right? Yep, there is. I, I mean, I, it all happened so fast in the fight. I don't, you know, I don't really recall. You know, I didn't consciously think it was illegal, but someone sent me a picture and it was like uh, the first knee you were on your your hands and knees and you were going to get up. She need you on your way up. Your hand was so clearly on the ground, and they sent me a picture, and I was like, oh, I guess that's that's a valid point. There is an instant replay process in Nevada. Was that, is that an angle that you explore at all, or is that just kind of like the way a fight goes and, and you'll move on? Oh, I mean, I'd like to see it, but I mean, I don't think it's going to change the results. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm pissed to say the least. You know what I mean? I'm definitely not happy. And um, I mean, fuck, I still feel like I was in the fight. <laughs> I don't, f- for one second, feel like you know that it, that it should have been stopped. You know, but I'm a fighter. I wanted to keep fighting, and um, you know, I came out really strong those first two rounds. I felt a- excellent. She's pretty heavy from top position, but. There, she told me to show me something. I, I don't know what you want. You know, I just sat up. I shot a double. I got back to my feet. I took some damage because of that because I was trying to listen to the referee. And she fucking stopped the fight. What do you want, you know? And then, Kat, if you don't mind, would you mind talking about that sequence with the knee? I'm sure that it wasn't intentional, but was that something you were aware of, that her hand was, was down? Can you kind of talk about that sequence? I have no idea what we're talking about, to be honest. Like, I... I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and it always happens, you know, like, I, I wish we could we could show me the fight before we do any of this stuff, because I, I really go in there, and it's kind of like, I remember little bits and pieces of the fight, but I don't have the whole sequence of things that happen uh, at all, like, I wish... I wish I would be able to see the fight and then we could do these press conferences so I could go over and give you better legitimate answers. I don't feel like whatever we're talking about is what won me the fight. You know, I think that that I won. I think I went and I need her. I think that her face shows it. You know, I think no doubt in my mind that that, that was my fight. I came back and, and I finished strong. And um, I don't have any excuses for how I did tonight. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, Kat, if you could please hide this way. Um, I noticed that during the weigh-ins and the stare down and all of that, you seemed a little bit nervous, like you were almost shaking. What really, what switch was flipped for you that got you to turn into that animal instinct when you got into the octagon? There's a lot of switches in me that get flipped, you know. Um, my day-to-day routine is, is a constant back and forth, you know. I go from being a mom to a fighter to a wife to a, you know, a, a mentor to a coach, you know. So so there's a lot of things that, that go on in me where I have uh, a lot of different roles to play. And, um, you know, when I was getting ready in the back tonight, I was walking around and I was thinking, you know, uh, my mom died when in 2005, and I was on a pretty rough path before she died. And when she did die, I promised her I was going to take my life to good things. And I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no idea what I was talking about, but that I was going to make her proud and not to worry about me, and it was okay to go. And, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about my son. I'm always thinking about, you know, I need to, I need to protect him. I need to keep him safe. And uh, I really had this kind of maternal instinct kind of going on. And, um, you know, 
Misha Tate represented a big bad bear, and and I'm out there, you know, saving his life. And and my my mom's death definitely pushed me in a way where I wanted to have a positive outcome with my life. And this is how it came to fruition. I'm here. I'm in the UFC. I'm 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 fighting people for for a way to support my myself and my family. And um, plus, it's fun. You know, it's a really good outlet, and it helps me deal with. Definitely my switches you guys are seeing go on, you know? So um, it was, uh, it, it, it's, it's just a constant switch back and forth in this world, you know? I'm a really friendly person. I'm very approachable. I enjoy meeting new people. I like having fun getting to know all of you. But then all of a sudden, you know, I'll, I'll have critics. Then all of a sudden there's someone standing across the cage from me that wants to hurt me and um, someone that wants to take something from me. And uh, these are all things that, you know, it really takes a lot of uh, a lot of tough skin and, and mental toughness to get through, and um, you know every single one of these moments was was a new moment for me. I've never experienced the things that I've experienced this week going through the UFC and getting ready for a fight here, and uh, you know like I said, it's it's an experience that will be hard to top. It's a really good one. Yes. <laughs> And uh, Kelvin, for you, uh, you had said that Uriah was a friend of yours and that it was going to be very difficult for you to find a reason to hate him, to go into the octagon and do the damage that you did. But what for you mentally went into this fight and being able to overcome that? Uh, yeah, you know, during the show, he was uh, a great friend and, and we trained together a lot. Um, my preparation for this fight mentally you know he's he's trying to take something that uh that i think i deserve and that something that i earned here tonight and that's how i go into the fight you know he's trying to take something that i got and uh you know i'm not gonna let anybody take that away from me one more question for you ryan um seems like you have two rematches to to wrench which one would you rather want Dom or bra <coughs> Yeah, <laughs> 135. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't care. I'm doing this because I love it. Uh, I do whatever these guys say. Uh, Johnny Cash over here, all in black. And uh, basically, uh, whatever these guys want. Liz Carmouche fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were talking about earlier when we first walked in. But, uh, yeah. I, I, of course, I'd rather punch Dominic in the face, but Burrell is is one of the guys that has earned a spot. I mean, the guy's on the biggest win streak in UFC history, and I feel like, you know, it was an uneventful fight last time. I'd like to make it more eventful. That means getting a little bit more crazy in there. He, he did a good job of slowing me down last time. Um, Dom was actually moves a lot more, but was easier for me to hit than and do damage to than Burrell. And uh, so I don't know. It's it's a it's one of those things. I'll probably fight both of them eventually anyway so I'm just going to kick back and relax and uh, reminisce about the good old days tonight with uh, Scotty and, and uh, hopefully I'll meet him in the finals for a belt someday and uh, lastly for Kat you have Ronda sitting right in front of you anything you uh, want to tell her before the show starts good luck mm-hmm. yeah, jo- uh, John Morgan wants to ask one more question Thanks, John. Just want to, you to keep you here longer. I apologize. Just want to ask Bob, but Bob, I know this has been kind of a, a long journey for you to get to this point. Um, tell us how you're feeling now after such a such a convincing win. Do I still have a job? That's kind of where I'm at. Is you know, I just want to, I just want to be in this organization. You know, fight for the UFC. It's it's a, uh, it's been a long road. You know, I've had a long career before I even got here. I, you know, in the. The ultimate fighter wasn't too kind to me, I don't think. You know, so I feel like it's time for me to go out and show some skill that uh, that I haven't been able to showcase yet. You mentioned that the ultimate fighter wasn't kind. I mean, do you feel like you were portrayed unfairly or, or you just had a rough experience? What was it? No, I mean, my body tried to kick my own ass. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I was... Uh, I was in the worst mental and physical state my body's ever been in, you know. I uh, I broke down in, in more than one way. So, you know, the, just the house, being a big guy, you know, fighting at 85, and it went in there, it took a toll on me. Good. Okay. We're going to uh, get Rhonda and Kat up here and square them off uh, for photo ops. Thank you all for coming tonight. We appreciate it.
I like it. Uh, you know, the uh, I do the fighter meeting after the weigh-ins. And I went up there and I talked to the guys and said, this excludes the women. I'm not talking to you guys. Uh, you always put on great fights. So, and, and they did again. People were texting me and people were on Twitter. People who were in bars and restaurants and said the places were going crazy over that fight. What about awesome the crowd fight. reaction inside awesome. the building? All night. Not just for that fight all night, but that the, the fight was awesome. The women always uh, always bring it. What do you tough. think? What do you think about the tough finale? You have obviously Uriah. I don't think kind of went in there. I thought he showboated a little too much, and it cost him. See, I didn't think he showboated. I think he, he uh, I think he mentally broke. I think that uh, you know you saw what he had in this season, but what you find when you find out what a guy really has is when he's under pressure. When you're under pressure is when you you know you, you find out who the Anderson Silvas and the George St. Pierre's are. You know those type of guys. Um, you know, he's got a lot of skills, and his wrestling looked good tonight. I mean, everything looked good tonight. You just got to work on his head. I just told him that. You got to get that head straight, man. You, you, get, you need to become meaner. You're not mean enough. Did you see any controversy whatsoever with the women's fight? Just with the and the None whatsoever. No. no. Let me tell you what. Misha Tate is tough as hell. She ate some nasty knees. She, what was she? Five or six, seven knees before they stopped that fight? And it was time to stop. She did, was... You, did, you call the, did you see like the, the Travis, like when he was helping uh, the elbow thing? Did you really watch the, the elbows? That was legal? Yeah, well, when I was looking at it again, me and, me and Joe Silva were looking at a, uh, you know, a replay of it on the internet, and uh, he was out with the ones to the side, and then he hit him with a couple more to the back of the head after he was out. It's the way that I saw it, it go. But again, uh, the referee. I thought the referee. You know me. If I didn't think the refs did a good job, I can tell you, they did a good job tonight. You know. Ah. Dana, what about? But you know, they, they did. They did a good job for. Considering the, the bad situations tonight, when people were in bad situations, they did a good job of stopping the fights. What about Demetrius Johnson? He was supposed to headline this card. Have you heard anything on his status? And maybe I don't. I don't know anything about Demetrius. I don't, I don't know what's up. Can you talk about the Fox Sports One launch now that it's official? And you've kind of been mom about it, but you know, Eric said you're excited. This is where he promised you guys would always be. You oh, said is, there was like a transition period. Yeah, so. this is what we talked about. And I told you guys, you know, everybody had their opinions when this thing started. And nobody knew where it was going. We did. Um, and the thing that was so awesome about Fox, you know, we end up doing this deal like this, getting the deal done, and we had all this um, content that we wanted to, 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 to distribute. Like, people were bitching about fights being on fuel. Well, how about the fights not being anywhere? How about nobody being able to see the fights? How about that? Because that's, that's the way it would have been if we weren't with a big company like Fox. They spread our programming across all their platforms, you know, FX isn't even a sports network, but they put us on FX. The people at FX welcomed us with open arms and, and worked with us to help build the show and do all these different things. The experience over there has been phenomenal. They kept every word they, they kept every word they ever said to us, and um, and I'm excited about Fox Sports One. And obviously, you can tell by what he said and by what's going on that they're looking at us as a big. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a big part of the programming on this network. So I'm really excited about it. And that includes, like, uh, you know, all the shoulder programming, news show, uh, oh. highlight reels, it'll all be on. Anybody, anybody who has Fuel TV, Fuel TV is awesome. I mean, if you're a fan of the UFC and you have Fuel TV, you're loving life. I mean, great fights that we have from all over the world. The, the programming that they do, the the, uh, the news shows are awesome. I mean, they've done a great job over there. And that and what do you think Fox Sports 1 is going to be like? I mean, it's going to be... Even better. What about this venue here as opposed to the smaller ones for the. You know, I, I wasn't crazy about it when the deal went down because what happened was Def Leppard had residency over there at the same time. So we had to come over here. This worked out fantastic. Hard Rock shouldn't have let us do this because I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Let me tell you what, we, 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 we might be moving again. I, I, I like it over here. No, no, he didn't mean the big box fight. Everything. Yeah, we'll still have four big box fights here. Yeah. Get your two women fights in. You know, so far, what are your? How do you? Obviously, the first man the first round. It was a pretty exciting show. Set. This one's pretty all over the place. Pretty, pretty active. Did you ask for anything more after this? The women's show. fights don't suck. They're yeah. very good. I love it, man. They're, they're they're fantastic, and I love this division we got. I mean, this 135 pound division. Like I said, when we did this, it's very competitive. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Ask about Fallon Fox. I'm sorry, but uh, what he, uh, this was. A I don't want to talk about. It. I have nothing to do with Fallon Fox. Would you ever sign? Fallon Fox isn't any, Fallon Fox isn't anywhere near being signed yeah. by the Steelers. I'm but not getting sucked talking. into that one. Have <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you heard anything regarding his complaints? I about heard he was here tonight. Uh, that's all I know. I have you heard anything from his camp regarding yeah. the Jays? Uh, nothing. What about Leoto? He was here. Is he still your number one contender? Is he waiting yep. for that? Yep. Yep. Are you losing weight? You look like you're dropping some weight. Not a fact, I am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been on this diet because of my ear. And, uh... It how sucks, that, but I'd rather that, have my weight on. I was having a lot more fun when I had my weight. <laughs> how does that help the ear, if you don't mind my ass? You have to get on this crazy diet where you can't have any salt, you can't have any alcohol, uh, and a lot of other things you can't have. And it's uh, driving me crazy, but I'm losing weight. And you'll live long. And I'll, and we'll see. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather live the way that I was living before. <laughs> but thank you. You guys done with me? Good night, Good night, guys. Thank you so much.